Hello, and welcome to Waycross Candidate Profiles. Each year during the election season, we offer candidates in the Waycross viewing area an opportunity to speak for up to five minutes in length to you, the voting audience at home. Waycross does not take positions on candidates or issues, but I do encourage you to vote on November 2nd. Hello, my friends. My name is Terrence A. Harrison, and I am a writing candidate seeking your support in my bid to become your next Forest Park City Council member. Now you may ask, who is Terrence A. Harrison and what does he stand for? Well, for starters, I am a proud resident of this city who has lived in Forest Park since 1978. I am a product of the Green Hills Forest Park School District where I graduated from Forest Park High School in 1989. I obtained a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Northern Kentucky University and also have a master's degree in the same discipline from the University of Cincinnati. Currently, I work at the University of Cincinnati where I serve as the program manager in the Office of Veterans Programs and Services. I am a servant. I joined the United States Army Reserves in January of 1989 where I currently serve as the Equal Opportunity Advisor for the 307th Medical Brigade. My travels with the Army include Panama, Ecuador, Germany, Kuwait, and Iraq. I also sit on the Board of Directors for Education Matters, an organization located in the Lower Price Hill neighborhood of Cincinnati that is committed to strengthening the community by removing the barriers for education. So with your support, I am committed to these three principles, safe streets, economic improvements, and quality of life. So my friends, I hope that when you go vote on Tuesday, November 2nd, please remember to write in Terrence A. Harrison. I believe that with your support, we can take Forest Park in a direction that is beneficial for all. Thank you. Hello, Forest Park. This is Councilwoman Chelsea Nuss-Clark. And I just want to say thank you so sincerely from the bottom of my heart for entrusting me with your voices and advocating for you each and every day in this city. You know, we mark 60 years, uh, 60 years as the first planned community, 60 years, and we were the first site for home Arama, and a lot of really good things have happened, but there's a lot more work to be done. I'm a business owner, I own a STEM lab, I work with children, but I'm also a single mom of two, and I see the things that we need as a city when it comes to what families need, enhancing the quality of life. I'm really proud to report on a few things that have transpired since I've been fortunate enough to be a councilwoman here. Uh, when it comes to economic development, we know that that is one of the backbones of any community, making sure that we retain the right businesses and we acquire the right businesses. Well, I'm happy to report that in the census, Forest Park did not stay stagnant. We did not decrease in numbers, but we actually grew. We are now the second largest city in Hamilton County behind Cincinnati. Now we're not gonna catch Cincinnati, but that is where we are and we are very, very happy of the progress that we've made in order to do that. And that could not have been done without, of course, your work and, and your votes and the community, um, what you bring to the community, but also through our commissions. I serve as the vice chair of the Economic Development Commission. I'm extremely proud of that work because a lot of work has been done in thinking about what you have said in terms of the revitalization for Kroger and making sure that that happened. Um, also the fact that we are getting a state-of-the-art Hamilton County New Branch Library. I am so proud to have been able to be part of that visioning experience and brainstorming and bringing that to fruition through one of just many voices uh, on council. And that place is going to be very, very great for our families. It's gonna have a STEM maker space, very hands-on. We're gonna have community spaces in there and then even bleeding into outside place for uh, fitness. So a wonderful space and new addition to our city that is coming in just a couple years. I also know that when it comes to the makeup of Forest Park, we are very unique. We are very, very diverse and we needed a business initiative that would reflect that diversity and be inclusive and offer equity. And so I am happy to announce that I also started our city's first minority community business initiative. It designed to help amplify those voices of businesses, both minority, women, and veteran owned, so that they can have the tools they need to get ahead. And we have successfully graduated our first co spring cohort 
for mortar, a now nationally recognized incubator that's just here uh, that locally operates in over the Rhine. Uh, when it comes to infrastructure as well, Metro 7, uh, I helped get that pass. I fought for those rights because we've got several people that utilize that bus service that need access to their jobs to and from. In, in a historic vote just a couple weeks ago as a trustee of SORTA, we unanimously voted for the $1.2 million expenditure grant for infrastructure here in the city of Forest Park. I'm very excited about that. And also, when the pandemic hit last year, it was very terrifying. We have a lot of elderly families here, and we know that we are one of those communities that was going to be hit hard. And so I quickly uh, collaborated with Shooters and um, Word of Deliverance and Kemper Road Christian Church and Forest Chapel and brought our faith leaders together and said, hey, can we collaborate and feed our people? And we were able to do just that. I secured a contract with uh, Free Store Food Bank, and we successfully completed that, passing out more than 500 uh, meals to families every month from May through August. And that was an excellent effort. So I get things done. When it comes to collaboration as well, our Forest Park Police Department is really second to none. They have successfully ach achieved accreditation internationally through Aquila, or Kalia, their accreditation process. I'm so happy to have been part of the, um, be the chair of the Public Safety Committee. And I've also been working on acquiring our uh, our officers' body cameras, which they are very excited about. And we now are working on a formal partnership with the Urban League, the Social Justice Department, so that we can help beef up our applications so that we can um, hopefully get those cameras. So what I will do, uh, I will continue to do for this great city, is making sure that each and every time I'm working, I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about the advocacy and what you need in order to help thrive and to make sure that our city really shines and is the gym that everyone needs to know it is in Hamilton County. I appreciate your vote. I'm Chelsea Nuss Clark. Hi, I'm Joe Hunter Law and I'm currently a Springfield Township trustee. I'm running for re-election this November 2nd and I would appreciate your vote. I'd like to take the next couple of minutes and share with you some of the achievements and accomplishments that we have, uh, that we have had while I've been on the Board of Trustees. We created the Springfield Township Fire Department, uh, which has been named the Ohio Department Fire Department of the Year by the Ohio Department of Public Safety. We also provide 24-hour paramedic service to all of our residents, and our EMS department has been given a superior rating by the Cincinnati Academy of Medicine. Our paramedics have life have advanced technology and they have heart monitors and Lucas CPR devices so that they can perform life-saving procedures right in the field. We've also partnered with the University of Cincinnati and we house the UC Mobile Stroke Unit which can actually perform very advanced medicine right in your driveway. We're one of the few communities in the nation that has this type of service. Our police department has reduced crime and they operate to the highest level of professional services every day. We have always promoted economic development and recently we've had a number of new projects come to Springfield Township. These include the new Christ Hospital Medical Center on Winton Road, My Cozumel Restaurant, a new Bank of America branch in the Brentwood Shopping Center, and a 55,000 square foot Tri-Health Medical Center which is going to be constructed very uh, soon uh, on Galbraith Road near Ronald Reagan Highway. Additionally, in the future, uh, Chick-fil-A is right now going through plans to open a restaurant uh, in the Finneytown area as well as City Barbecue Restaurant. Over the last several years, we've secured $7,500,000 $500,000 in state funds and we have used those to repave 120 out of the 400 or so township streets. We renovated the community center and the Grove Banquet Hall using TIF funds so we didn't have to raise additional taxes. Looking towards the future, we also have plans to turn the, nerd, the 
Warder Nursery pro property into a nature preserve with walking trails for our residents. The most important thing we did though is we have a, created a great team of police, fire, and service employees who work together every day to make this a better community for all of us. We've been successful because our Board of Trustees has always worked together as a group and we avoid the partisan politics and squabbling you see in other communities. I have no political aspirations other than to be your Springfield Township trustee. I would appreciate your vote this November 2nd, and I would also request you vote for my fellow trustee, Mark Burney. Together, we'll continue our progress to make Springfield Township a better place. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy Ulrich, and I'm a candidate running for Coring Township Trustee this November. I would like to take this time to thank Waycross Community Media for giving us all the opportunity to talk about our campaigns and issues that matter to the voters of Coring. A lot of people ask, why are you running for trustee? For me, the answer is simple. I love Coring Township. I believe that our community has a lot to offer people, but at the same time, I see opportunities that we could do better. So that's why I stepped in and chose to put my name on the ballot. I have a passion for Coleraine because I have lived here for almost 40 years and raised my four children. I've worked as a realtor for 40 years selling Coleraine Township and love living here. As a realtor, I've been involved in PWC, people working cooperatively, helping residents in Coleraine that need a little minor cleanup and repairs on their homes. I have also been involved at the Clippard YMCA for realtors, volleyball tournament, raising money for kids for camp. Myself and my office have been very active in the taste of Coleraine over the years, raffling off baskets to donate the money to the Coleraine Boosters. I've also been a member of St. John's Dry Ridge since 1986, where I was a chairperson for the Festival Basket Booth for 25 years, 10 years the chair for the Fashion Show, which we have finished computer labs, science labs, and have done various other projects that the school has needed. As I've been traveling around the township, talking to residents, families, and businesses, my message has been clear. If elected, I want to use my private sector experience to ensure every dollar spent is effective and efficient. These are your tax dollars, and it is our responsibility to make sure it is spent correctly. Secondly, we need transparency and communication. I am a firm believer in open dialogue with the community when it comes to the important decisions made by the trustees. Third, we still need more cleanup in Coleraine. It will always be a passion of mine to clean the trash and litter off our streets to make this a desirable community to come and plant their roots. Fourth, and something very important to me, is to keep the support of our brave, dedicated police, fire, and EMS professionals. The top priority of the government is to keep our citizens safe, and it is critical that our trustees provide these men and women with the resources they need to do their jobs for us. In closing, I am running because I do love Coleraine Township. I have never run for office before, but I felt a calling to step up and use my experience to move our community forward in a positive direction. Again, my name is Kathy Ulrich, and I'm asking for your vote for Coleraine Township trustee on November 2nd. Thank you. Hi, I'm Coleraine Township Trustee Dan Unger. Thank you for the opportunity you've given me these past four years to serve on the Board of Trustees. I have really enjoyed it. You know, as you drive around Coleraine Township during this election season, you see a lot of campaign signs. I have my signs too, they're blue and white. But more importantly, when you see those signs, you have to wonder, what is a candidate besides a name on a sign? I have put together a website, unger4trustee.com, and it has my detailed positions and ideologies. It has what I consider to be the accomplishments of the Board of Trustees over the past four years. It has my plans for the future. I think our biggest accomplishment in this township and something that we have set the standard for that other surrounding municipalities should follow is by December of 2021, we will have paid off the last of our remaining outstanding general obligation bonds and Coleraine Township will be free of long-term debt. During the past four years in 18, 19, 20, and now in 21, we have had multi-million dollar operating budget surpluses, which helps the township out, which makes it a more reliable place to work for our employees, 
which makes it better for our citizens, which makes it better to be able to handle emergencies or ice storms or anything else that might, might come up. I was raised to always pay debts off and make that the priority. And I'm very proud to be a part of the first board of trustees that has gotten to the end of the term and, and we've achieved our financial goals. One of my other goals was to be very transparent. If you go to our township website, colrain.org, you will see our transparency portal. And through that, you can get into it. You can see numbers of police runs, neighborhoods, detailed finances, expenditures, it's all there. And if it's something you can't find, you can call the township or you can call me at 404-3057 and I'll help guide you to that. The, our parks department, we have really done a lot with our parks and over the past year, a lot of people have used them. Um, we put in a new playground at Colrain Park. We've kept the places clean, we've kept them mowed. Our public works department does a great job. Our police department, around the country, a lot of different departments had a lot of issues, especially last year during 2020. I'm proud that because of the way we manage our police department and the exceptional training level of our officers, that none of those problems came to visit us in Colerain Township. In fact, we had almost 40,000 interactions with the public in 2020, and out of those 40,000 interactions, we had 13 complaints. Seven of those were internally generated, where an officer thought we might do something better and re recommended that to another officer. The other six, frankly, were people who probably didn't want to be arrested. Our fire department has the highest rating. What does that mean? In my personal life, and I contacted my insurance agent, because of the top rating of our fire department, my homeowner's insurance is about $65 less than it would be if I was located in a different municipality. So we've done these things. I've done what I said I would do, and I would ask for your vote on November 2nd for Dan Unger for Colerain trustee. Thank you. Hi, my name is Deborah Bryant, and I'm running for Winton Woods School Board. Why should you elect me? I've been a resident of the district for over 19 years. I've had children who have attended and graduated from Winton Woods City Schools. I'm a passionate advocate for a community, active in the PTA when my children were in school, as well as a self-appointed wrestling mom back in the day. I am a current member of the Winton Woods um, we Thrive Committee and a former me member of the Witten Woods Community Coalition with a focus on smoke-free Ohio. I love the community I live in. I'm passionate about education. I am a doctoral student completing my dissertation um, in educational leadership from Northern Kentucky University. I have been a registered nurse for over 29 years and I am passionate about the health of the community and the students in the district. So please, if you ex want more, please vote for Deborah Bryant for school board. Thank you. Hello, my name is Savon Gibson Sr. and I'm running for Winton Woods School District Board of Education. Just a little background on me. I have 12 years of experience in the financial industry with the last seven years at the Internal Revenue Service. I'm a financial planner by trade. My education is I have a bachelor's degree in business administration from Tiffin University. I've also completed coursework to become a certified financial planner at Xavier University. I've spent many of years on committees and boards throughout Cincinnati that includes the Tauber House, United Way of Greater Cincinnati. I've also volunteered for multiple boards and done financial planning education throughout the city. I've assisted with impacting over 500 families through financial literacy in Cincinnati. Running for the Winton Woods School Board is important to me because I have invested interest in the school, in the community. I have a fourth grader and a fifth grader that both attend Winton Woods uh, South Campus. So this is not only personal for me, but this is, this is a passion for me. I'm running because as a community member as well, I expect more from the school board. Also with my fellow members that are running with me, Brandon Smith and DeMarco Kennemore, which are Winton Woods alums, 
instructors, coaches, and we're all community leaders. Uh, this past year, I also facilitated the Mortar Entrepreneurship Academy Forest Park cohort. So that in itself is my involvement within the community. Like I said, we have invested interest for the future. We would like to bring transparency to the community. We want to create and establish a relationship with the community, school board, and city council so that we can continue to access more opportunities for our school board moving forward, for our school district. Once again, uh, you can find me at www.savongibsonsenior.com to learn more about me personally. And you can also look, up, look us up on Facebook under Expect More Forest Park. Thank you and have a blessed day. Hello, my name is Dr. Viola Johnson and I'm currently a member of the Wynton Woods City School Board of Education and I'm seeking reelection. My husband of over 37 years and I have lived in the Wynton Woods City School District since 1986. Throughout the years, we have had four students graduate from Wynton Woods and three received full scholarships to universities in Ohio. I myself have a bachelor's degree in business education, my master's degree is in deaf studies, and my doctorate degree is in educational leadership. And I'm currently full-time employed at Cincinnati State Technical and Community College where I have worked for the past 30 years. Over the past eight years, I have served as a member of the Wynton Woods City School Board of Education. And I have had the privilege of being instrumental in executing some of the significant changes in the district. Years ago, I campaigned on the promise that I would fight for the district policy that improved academic quality, encouraged community engagement, and establishes financial stability for years to come. Once I joined the board, I immediately used my time to fulfill those promises. You voted for progress and high expectation. We implemented all day kindergarten and preschool. You voted for academic quality. We raised the GPA for student athletes where the state's requirement is 1.0 and we raised it to 2.5. We offer ACT and SAT prep classes and the school district uses project-based and problem-based teaching learning model. As well as we offered a robust summer school program for all the students in the district. You voted for financial security and we successfully secured millions of dollars from the state through the Ohio School Facilities Co Construction Commission to build two new schools, one K through six in Green Hills and seven through 12 in Forest Park and we were able to restore busing to all the students in the district that live outside of a one mile radius. The changes brought about due to the pandemic have made the past year very difficult for all of us. However, I would like the opportunity to continue to work for future generations of students in the Wynton Woods City School District. I am a product of and a strong advocate for public education, and I believe that it is the foundation upon which our children can build success. As an educator, an active volunteer, and a long-term resident, I understand that higher academic expectations and curriculum enhancements have a direct impact on improved student performance. My name is Dr. Viola Johnson, and this district is my home. You are my family, you are my friends, you are my neighbors. And my promise to you is that I am ready and willing to continue working on behalf of the district so that we continue to make strides toward better tomorrows. Our children, our community, and our future warriors deserve to be educated in schools where progress and high expectations are the norm. The citizens of Forest Park, Green Hills, and Springfield Township have the power to continue to move this district forward toward progress and higher expectations. There are many candidates on the ballot for the Wynwood City School Board of Education. So when you go to the polls on Tuesday, November the 2nd, or if you vote early, remember to vote for me. Vote to keep the district moving in the right direction. Vote for progress, vote for higher expectations and collaboration, Vote for me, Dr. Viola Johnson. Thank you. Hello, 
My name is Ed Stadnick, and I would like to tell you a little about myself and why I want to serve on the Winton Woods School Board. First, my background. I am a veteran serving two years in the U.S. Army. I worked for NCR Corporation as a technician, district service manager, salesperson, and project manager over a period of 37 years. I was asked to move to Forest Park in 1981 as a promotion to the district manager having responsibility for the Cincinnati office. I accepted and immediately became active in a number of organizations. First, I joined the Forest Park Baseball Association and served at every position on the board for my 18-year tenure. I also served on the Forest Park Civil Service Commission for 10 years. For nine of them, I was the chairperson. I was very active at Our Lady of the Rosary Parish and School in Green Hills. I was a charter member of the Oktoberfest Committee, formed to administrate functions to raise money for the school so that we would not have to increase tuition. I also served on the Economic Development Commission since 2010, and for the last five years, I have been chairperson. I graduated magna cum laude from Duquesne University in 2007 with a Bachelor of Science in Business and Computer Science. After being laid off from NCR, I became a realtor for Keller Williams Real Estate. It was during that employment that I became familiar with the Winton Wood School Board. I met with Superintendent Dr. Anthony Smith and Business Manager Steve Denny to relate to them the problem I was having selling houses in Forest Park. I told them that most of my pro prospects preferred purchasing houses in Springdale and the Princeton School District rather than Forest Park because of the failing grades given to the school district by the Ohio Board of Education. I became mildly familiar with the Ohio Department of Education report card and found that at least one of our grade levels has been graded mostly as a failure level over a 10-year period. Most importantly, I have taught in three districts over the past four years, Northwest, Princeton, and Winton Woods. For the past two years, I taught mostly at the intermediate, middle, and junior high schools. This year, I was called by both Winton Woods South Campus and Princeton School and asked to teach. I stated that I would not be available until October 15th since I have been caring for our special needs daughter in her battle with breast cancer since April. The South Campus asked me to call them on October the 16th and they would be able to use me in some capacity. Having recently taught in the school district, I have seen firsthand some of the problems that continue contribute to the failing grade. I believe that I have some ideas that if implemented can improve the situation. Someone asked me who I was running against on the school board. I responded that I, quote, was not running against anyone and am not an adversary of the board, but I am running for an open seat on the school board. I continued that I am running to work with the school board, teachers, parents, students, and taxpayers to improve the level of learning and obtain a passing grade level on the state report card. If you have any questions, feel free to call me at 513-742 8868 or email me at edwardstadnick at verizon.net. I would be grateful if you would vote for me to be your liaison on the Winton Wood School Board. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Aaron Washington Childs and I'm an independent candidate for the Winton Wood City Schools Board of Education. I want to start by thanking Waycross Community Media for hosting me and giving me this opportunity to speak to voters prior to the election on November 2nd. A little bit about myself, I'm 29 years old and I reside currently in Forest Park with my wife Matilda. I was born and raised in the Forest Park neighborhood here in Cincinnati. 
and recently returned to the neighborhood in October of 2020 from New York City. And when I returned, I decided to make a difference in my community, and hence I'm running for the school board for Wynn Woods. My educational journey actually began in the Wynn Woods City School District. I attended grades kindergarten through sixth grade, and then following sixth grade, transferred to Walnut Hills High School for grades seven through 12, graduating Walnut Hills High School in 2010. Following my high school graduation, I enrolled at the illustrious Morehouse College and graduated in 2014 with a bachelor's degree in international studies and a minor in journalism and sports. Following my time in Morehouse, I enrolled at the Case Western Reserve University School of Law in Cleveland, Ohio, and earned my Juris Doctorate in 2018. And in 2019, I began my legal career by working for the New York City Law Department in the borough of Manhattan. My job was basically to represent the city of New York against anyone who was suing the city for personal injury. And now, I have opened up my own firm, the Law Office of Aaron Washington Childs, LLC, here with the office in Blue Ash. And I practice in criminal defense, juvenile delinquency, personal injury, and abuse, neglect, and dependency. So I'm sure you're wondering why am I running for the Board of Education here in Wynn Woods. I'm running because Wynn Woods has unfortunately been failing our students by not providing the level of education that I believe they should get. And we pay far too high a rate of taxes for the amount of return we get in our investment. So for those reasons, I wanted to run to make a difference and to make sure that we make Wynn Woods City School District provide a world-class education to all the students that come from Forest Park, Green Hills, and Springfield Township. I believe that I am uniquely qualified to be able to produce better results for the Wynnwood City School District by being on the Board of Education because I've had two years of prior experience as a teacher, including one year at the Wynnwood Middle School teaching from the 2018 and 2019 school year. I also had one year of teaching experience in Denver, Colorado teaching ninth grade mathematics. In addition, in addition to my teaching experience, I also served on the Cincinnati Public Schools Board of Education as in the General Counsel's Department, working as an attorney in negotiating deals, including the FC Cincinnati Stadium deal, land swap agreement that currently has the TCL Stadium, I believe the name of it is, down in the West End. So I know what it takes from a policy standpoint and what it takes from a legal standpoint to actually run a successful Board of Education. And for those two reasons, with my teaching experience and legal experience, I feel like I will be a good addition to the Wynnwood City School District Board of Education. There are a lot of things that I want to accomplish when I get on the board. I want to start by focusing on bettering our academic performance by working to reform the curriculum and setting higher expectations for our children. Children will rise to the level of expectation that is set for them. And so if we set high expectations, they should rise to those. I also want to make sure that I empower our teachers in our district so they don't have to worry about distractions like cell phones in classrooms, and they can spend the majority of their teaching time teaching rather than putting out fires and distractions. I also want to work to make sure that I protect everyone in our district from the dangers of COVID-19. And most importantly, I want to make sure that everybody that is in our community can feel that they can trust our administration and our school staff because education starts in the home, it starts with the community. And if we want a world-class education, we need a world-class rapport with our community members. So if you wanna see these things, and you're committed to making sure that when you send your kid to school, when, to school at Wynton Woods, that you can take pride in the academic performance and the academic exposure they're getting, that they can develop their talents and their intellectual capabilities to the best of their highest potential, then vote for me on election day on November 2nd. Remember. Aaron Washington Childs. I thank you and I look forward to election day. Hi, my name is Dr. Patricia Bender and I am running for mayor in Green Hills. I was born and raised in Green Hills in the historical site, Gambier Circle. I was fourth child of six children and very active in the community. I actually went to Our Lady of the Rosary for parochial school and then to Green Hills High School. I got married had a daughter, and yes, all in Green Hills. I moved to Mount Adams for 15 years and decided I really wanted to come home. So I came home to Green Hills. And I found that the involvement in Green Hills was very, very sluggish, almost constipating. Being a health professional, I was a nurse at Mercy Hospital. Then I went on to chiropractic school, and I had a practice in Carthage 
Finneytown, Woodlawn, and Forest Park. I decided and saw a vision for Green Hills and decided I wanted to move into Green Hills with my practice. So I did, and I rented 12 Endicott Street, which was Dr. Romer's, my, as we would call him today, primary care doctor. He was the only doctor at the time. And I feel very honored and blessed to be able to rent that facility in our shopping center, which has indeed improved over the years. And my attempt for Green Hills was to bring and do a facelift for Green Hills. One area that I find that we really need to focus on, because I go to the monthly council meetings, we have three minutes to talk, which isn't a lot. We get no response, no answers, and have to sit down. We are left blinded by what council is actually doing. And every year in January, I go and ask, what are the goals for this year? And in nine years to this date, I have never heard an answer to that because they don't set goals. They decide what they're going to spend their money on and how they're going to spend their money on. I was informed we have a non-voted debt that is over next year, which means we can open that door of opportunity. We can have more socialization on our commons that we the people own by living here with our real estate taxes. We can have more socialization and events throughout the shopping center. We can have parties and events at our swimming pool. We have areas that are historical site, and this is a really key area that I found by going to a council meeting. The Green Hills Local Historic District came in and gave us a map of actually what the district is, which hasn't really been defined yet. But if you notice on this map that the village, the council, has cut out very important streets which in, within this district, which should be part of our historical site. It is Gambier Circle, it is Damon Road, and of course, the golf course. The golf course is a historical site, and it should be considered and maintained as a golf course, as well as Damon Road and Gambier Circle. So I think that we really need to open up a transparency of our mayor to the village, have town meetings, have gatherings where you can talk to the mayor and tell them, or council, and the mayor, tell him or she what it is that you really want in Green Hills. I go around and I talk to a lot of people. I am the golf cart lady. I rented golf carts for the last three years and it was very successful, very exciting, an opportunity from weddings to camping to just doing picnics. And I really wanna focus on areas that are very important to the village. One is the historic site needs to be defined and add Damon Road the golf course and Gambier Circle. Two, we need to update this charter. This charter was written in 1988 and it is needing a brush up. It needs to be renewed and researched and identified. The mayor needs to come back with transparency and be open to talk to people on a regular basis. And I really want to define that we need to update the charter. Another key area for me is that we need to talk about what we want to put up on the areas that have been taken down that are part of the historical site and put in houses, not barracks, as condos that are way out of pocket and then give them an abatement. Last but not least, we need to talk about technology and the effect of EMFs on our children. Cancer is very high and brain cancer specifically in children. And you know, because you're concerned about our Winton School District, which I also attend those meetings, that we want a positive environment, a healthy environment, because Green Hills is green. If you are ready for a positive change, write in Patricia Bender when you go to vote. That's Patricia Bender. I am a write-in, not a checkoff. Thank you very much. Hello, neighbor. My name is Thomas A. Caruso, and I'm running as an independent candidate for the mayor of Green Hills, and I'm asking you for your vote this November 2nd. Whether you voted for the two major parties your entire life, perhaps you're an independent, an independent such as myself. Maybe you've never voted in an election before. You've never felt like your voice mattered enough to be counted, or if this is your very first time voting because you're just about to turn 18. I'm asking you for your vote because I want to work for you. I believe that together we can make government work for the people again. We the people. First and foremost, I want to see a greater level of transparency and communication between the people, council, and municipal management. As mayor, I alone can only do so much, but 
I can come up with some ideas to share with you in the community and listen to your concerns and help magnify those and bring that voice to the council. And together, we can make real changes. Some concerns I have, trash pickup was added to our water bill. It used to go to the village and the price is fluctuating wildly with no reason. I would like to see that returned to the village as soon as possible. COVID tax relief funding was given to the village as an emergency basis, but we don't know what that money was used for and more is on the way. I'd like to know what their plans are for that and perhaps maybe they should listen to some of our ideas of how that could be best used. We were never consulted about 15 year tax abatements on new overpriced construction that by design prices out young working families that Green Hills was built for. We need these type of people to come to our community to build up a strong base, both for taxes and for the future. And those tax abatements, when someone else isn't paying the bill, so guess who is? We are. This showcases some terrible planning that immediately impacts all of our individual tax burdens. We all know that money doesn't grow on trees, even in the beautiful forests that surround Green Hills. And a major concern is the destruction of the historic buildings. We must do something to revitalize this. There are programs that we can reach through the National Park Service that could potentially help us to revitalize uh, distressed areas that we still have and potentially make new things to come back to our historic designation. The world will continue to rapidly change around us and we must all work together to meet these needs and build up green hills in the face of economic, environmental, and health changes. I would like to see a revitalization of the Green Hill Shopping Center to expand opportunities for new businesses. Our commons and public spaces are wonderful and the programs that we have to utilize them have been great. Let's expand those. We need responsible new home construction that's in the spirit of Green Hills. Housing in which families can grow and help to build our community while thinking of their grandchildren and even their grandchildren's grandchildren. Once again, we must turn Green Hills into a model for our nation through innovation and planning. I would like to have the creation of a neighbor, neighbor to neighbor council that can look at policies being proposed by council and the operations of management and daily contact to discuss these issues and concerns. I've talked to people who have had problems with parking, problems with lighting and safety. These are things that should be able to be addressed easily, not wait years and years to fix. The we also need a village-wide high-speed Wi-Fi service that's available to all residents and businesses, in addition to any private home service that you already use. We saw in 2020 that many of us require internet connections for work, school, and for public health. These are demands that we can make and we have the right to make them and be heard. So please vote for me, Thomas A. Caruso, independent candidate for mayor of Green Hills this November, or vote early. And I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Moore. I'm the mayor of the village of Green Hills and I'm running for re-election this November and would like to uh, request the citizens of Green Hills to continue supporting me as the mayor of Green Hills. In the past, uh, I've spent about 50 years of my life uh, promoting uh, the village of Green Hills as a great place to live and to raise a family, uh, retire in, grow old in, which I can relate to. and. Uh, uh, I've uh, had various uh, positions serving the village of Green Hills as residents. Um, I originally came to Green Hills in the 70s. I uh, was on the fire department, the volunteer fire department, which is still looking for volunteers today. Uh, if you'd like to volunteer, I uh, 
left my job at General Electric and became the public works director for the village of Green Hills. Uh, we were a city at the time. Uh, then we became a village and I became the village administrator. Then the citizens adopted a charter and I became the village manager, or the municipal manager. Um, and uh, have uh, uh, been uh, a big fan of Green Hills, loved the job, loved working for the citizens, loved doing new things, keeping the town growing. Uh, and uh, even though we've lost population, um, it uh, has aged some. Uh, we still have a lot of exciting things that we'll be wor working on, uh, building a new park uh, and the former golf course, uh, new housing uh, opportunities for uh, citizens in town, uh, both empty nesters and families. Um, and uh, I think Green Hills is a great place to live. I would like to uh, offer my services and my past experience to the administration and the present council. Uh, and um, would they be willing to continue doing this, which I enjoy, uh, for another four years. So again, I ask for your support and thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Pat Anvon and I am thrilled to be running for a seat on your Green Hills Council. I'm so grateful to Way Across for this opportunity to speak to you face to face without my mask on. I have two Facebook pages that I would love for you to follow. One is Pat and Vaughn for Green Hills Council. The second one is Green Hills on the Record. Now on that particular site, I post a lot of the public record requests that I have made since 2007, which actually expose some of the discrepancies in how our village has been run with the current mayor and council members and the ones before them. We have the highest taxes in all of Hamilton County, even though we're only 1.24 square foot or square miles. Uh, we have a volunteer fire department, but we don't have a paramedic. So everybody else has to come in to help. We have a police department that has four operating levies that we have to pay for. So that adds to our tax bill. My goals would be initially to call in the state and have a total performance audit as soon as possible. This isn't just adding up debits and credits. What it is, is actually looking at the efficiencies or the overabundance of personnel, services, where we can join with other communities to have cost savings. We need fair tax assessments. Right now, just back in 2018, I discovered that 82 properties on the streets where the mayor lives and many of the other past and present uh, politicians were being underassessed. So I filed complaints with the Board of Revision. Why did I do that? That was to get fair taxes for you and me. It didn't seem fair that some people had homes that their assessed valuation never went up, or in Dave Moore's case, it was being comped with Damon Road, which were homes were built in 1947. I'm looking for the uh, property values to be protected. They should be even, they should be fair. The quality of life should be something that we can be proud of and that we want to engage in. I think our garbage service should not be something that we have to pay for simply so the village can spend our money recklessly. Revitalizing the shopping center. When I worked in property management, I got a certified property management designation from the Institute of Real Estate Management, which is the premier organization. I managed three shopping centers, Cobblewood, Hillcrest, and uh, Tech 42. So those, actually that went by Crystalwood over on uh, Route 42. The uh, enforcing building codes, for gosh sake, if you set the bar down here for conditions on buildings and you don't enforce case, you have landlords that take advantage of that. You have tenants that are living with holes in the ceiling and light fixtures falling out because we're not doing the re rental inspections. We bought this property. It was a four family on Chalmers Lane back in 1976. Back then we had wonderful recreation services. My sons participated in t-ball, baseball, and uh, football was practiced back in Palma Park. Nowadays, our Recreation Commission is almost defunct. 
We no longer have say soccer. We no longer have the Wynn Woods Sporting Association for baseball. For decades, Dave Moore paid himself $2,000 a month to be our recreation or athletic director. The only thing he did was file paperwork for the nonprofit. So when Jane Berry came in, she stopped that. God knows how much we were lost over that deal. Now, I think my background in shopping center management is invaluable. I've already made contact uh, with the tenants and I'm trying to get in touch with the homeowner or the shopping center owner. I wanna arrange a meeting with him to review what his goals are and to review what the tenant's goals and needs are. I loved rehabbing townhouses. I know how to do it. I know how to make numbers add up. I know how to get along with people. I ran for office in 2007, 2009, 2011. This is our year, 2021. I'm looking for you to let me gather my energy with you to serve. Please vote November 2nd. One vote for Council Patty and Vaughn. Thank you.